with two guns from Pennsylvania. That's against the law to sell drugs to somebody else's drug habit. But now, that white kid who brought the two guns into New Jersey is home with his family on probation. But the black kid who got the drug problem who tried to buy the drugs from the white guy that had two guns who brought them across state lines, he's still sitting in jail. And we're debating with the prosecutor why he shouldn't go to prison. I'm tired. I'm sick and tired. And so here's my request while we're marching and protesting and wearing these nice shirts. We need a new prosecutor in Mars County. Get this, New Jersey is the worst state in the nation for imprisoning black and brown people. New Jersey is the worst state, not Alabama, not Mississippi, not Georgia, New Jersey. Guess what else? Mars County is one of the worst counties in the state of New Jersey. If you are black or brown and you get arrested here in this county, you have a 22% more chance of being sent to state prison for a nonviolent crime. So why are we out here protesting? Why are we out here marching? Be clear that there are people sitting right down in jail whose lives are about to be destroyed because they grew up here in Mars County. They, they're not from Philly like me. I'm Philly strong. <laughs> I had to fight all my life growing up. I was so glad to get out the neighborhood. <laughs> when I come to Mars County, I see people grow up here. I'm like, y'all should get all A's and be great students because it's good in Mars County. But the reality is I've heard so many children, so many young people crying. And this system is relentless. And we are putting non-violent youth in the state prison. And so here's my prayer. I pray, I beg, I plead that we do more than march, we do more than protest, we move beyond simply telling people what is obvious, and we do something about it. Because while we're doing this, there are some George Floyds right here in Mars County. There's some more Imani sitting in somebody's house right now, even today, as we sit here, there's somebody else saying, my life is not worth living. And so I want to encourage us, let's change the environment. Let's do something. Let not his life be in vain. Let's fight for his legacy so that every black and brown child who's ever contemplated suicide can think differently. My daughter's here. I think at some point she's going to sing. But this is real to me because my daughter, she has an Instagram account, so I'm not saying something that she hasn't already said. <laughs> this is already public information. But... As she grew up, she shared with me, and my mom, my wife already knew, I learned a little late, my own daughter tried to take her life. We moved here from South Africa where everybody was pretty much cool with the black thing. But we came here and my daughter felt less than because she was in an all-white environment trying to survive, trying to make sense of her blackness. And so I'm not preaching and teaching and trying to encourage people, my own daughter is trying to take her life. My own daughter is fighting with her blackness, fighting with the kinkiness of her hair, fighting with the color of her skin. And I found out four or five years later, I'm just glad she's living. So this is real. This is real talk. And again, thank you for allowing me to share. Let me just offer a brief prayer. I promise you'll be brief. God of heaven, our mother, our father, our comfort, help us. Help our unbelief. Give us the joy to wipe away these tears. And we pray that the angels who met Imani on that day that he took his life, or his life left his body, that they received him into a greater place. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.